YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. In today's video, we are taking a look at my very first custom 300 Blackout SBR build that I made using a variety of components from some of my favorite manufacturers. Um, this was my first 300 Blackout build that I made with the intention of using the SOCOM 300 SPS suppressor from Surefire. With that being said, let's get into the specs. I started off this build with the Aero Precision M4E1 lower receiver. In my opinion, if you are going to go the forged receiver route, you can't beat the M4E1 from Aero. It's the lightweight and money saving appeal of a forged receiver with the aesthetic and lines of a billet receiver. You can get these for around $100. I happened to score this on a deal they were having during one of their blem sales for about 65 bucks. Um, I knew that I was going to Cerakote the receiver, so the blem color didn't really matter to me. Next, I paired it with their upper receiver to match. Um, I then reached out to my friends over at Geisley and told them about the gray and bronze color scheme that I wanted to go with. So they were nice and sent me their 9.5 inch Mark 8 M-Lock rail in their desert dirt color, along with their super precision scope mount for the Vortex 1-6. to More on that Vortex in just a little bit. Geisley was also nice and sent over their super dynamic combat trigger. My favorite trigger is the super semi-automatic enhanced trigger from Geisley, and the SDC is essentially the same trigger, just with a flat face. I really like having a two-stage trigger on my rifle platforms. It's very familiar to me having that minimal take up and then a nice wall to stop at right before the break. I also went with the Geisley Super 42 heavy buffer and spring setup. The braided spring really helps with felt recoil and makes the gun even quieter by taking away that twang sound you tend to get with stock buffer springs. As always, I picked up my favorite grip, which is the BCM Mod Zero. The grip angle, the texture, and the added nub are why I prefer this grip on all of my AR platforms. I also added the Maritime Bolt Catch from Geisley to make reloads easier when dropping the bolt. I decided to go with the Ballistic Advantage 10.5 inch Modern Series Barrel for this build. Um, this barrel with the Super Gas Block from Geisley fit the build well. At the end of the barrel you'll find the Surefire War Comp which is a great muzzle device and is needed to work with my Surefire Suppressor. Along that Mark 8 rail you'll see some nice gray rail scales along with their carved hand stop. I really dig hand stops and carbines as it makes it easier to reference proper hand placement without having to look. Keeping with the gray color scheme, I went with a gray Cloud Defense Owl. Um, I won't bore you with the Lumen and Ken Dallas specs, however, if you are interested in that stuff, all the information is on their website. I will say this, it's nice and bright. Here is my backyard at night using the Owl. I do, however, want to show you the modularity of the light. The light can easily be moved for left or right-handed activation. As you all know, our buddy Eric is a lefty and I wanted him to enjoy the range day as much as the rest of us. Using the owl light, we were able to easily switch the light from the other side for him. The rear tail cap serves as the wrench tool to loosen the mount and then you can easily switch the head and cap to fit on either side. I really dig this about the owl light. Okay, so moving back, we get to that nice Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 1 to 6. This scope is awesome. The glass is clear, the magnification wheel is easy to use, and the illuminated dot and the reticle is a nice touch. You can feel the robust build quality right out of the box, and I also like the cap turret so your zero isn't affected. The 11 illumination settings for your reticle is also great for shooting in low light conditions. Vortex was nice enough to send this to us for a T&E. Um, this will be headed back to them though after this review, unfortunately. As a backup site, I decided to run the Holosun HS507C on an Arasaka 45 degree offset mount. The combination of this mount with the Geisley Super Precision mount lets me keep the Holosun closer to my line of sight so I can mount it further back to the rear of the gun. This is something I prefer as it makes it easier for me to get a sight picture and pick up the red dot. The mount sits high enough that it does clear the owl weapon light for those of you who are wondering and it too is reversible. While out on the range we were able to switch it over to the left side of the gun for Eric using a Torx screwdriver. Our zero wasn't affected as he was still able to hit our still target at 50 yards and while moving. Now, I know that shooting suppress can often get your gun dirty and gassy. For that, I decided to go with the Lantac Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group coated in nickel boron. The coating allows for your gun to run cooler and cleaner. This coupled with the vented Radiant Raptor SD charging handle that I picked up from Maturia Munitions made the gun cycle smooth and kept the gas out of my face while shooting suppressed. 
Speaking of Venture Munitions, the awesome gray Cerakote you see on the upper and lower receiver was done by them. Make sure to check out Ventura Cerakote on Instagram as they do awesome work. I also picked up a JE Machining fluted tan anodized buffer tube, Magpul CTR stock, and Radiant Ambidextrous 45 degree selector from the awesome guys over at Ventura Munitions. You guys all know that I work closely with Ventura Munitions and that they are my local go-to for any guns, parts, gear, etc. To finish this build off, I wanted a sling that was both gray and tan. I talked to my buddy over at Roan Industries about this and he put together this awesome padded two-point sling with bungee in wolf gray with tan buckles and a tan adjustment lever. Um, I think it's an awesome finishing touch and it brings the whole setup together. As you already noticed, Annie and Eric both came out with me to shoot this video. We ran about four to 500 rounds of SMB 200 grain subsonics through the gun, and I'm happy to say that the only issues we had were a couple of feeding issues from some old beat up Magpul mags that I was using. I switched over to my Lancer Tactical Clear Smoke Magazine, specifically made for 300 Blackout, and I didn't have any problems at all with the gun cycling. If you have 300 blackout guns, I would definitely recommend purchasing magazines that are specifically used for that gun so you don't accidentally use the wrong ammo in the wrong gun. Now we all know that 300 blackout isn't the cheapest round out there, especially right now. I am happy to report that I picked up a thousand rounds from Brownells for about 68 cents per round shipped to my door. Um, that was after shipping and tax, so awesome on Brownells for that price. Um, with everything going on right now, I think that's a pretty good deal. So we. Now let's talk about the Surefire SOCOM 300 SPS suppressor. You have seen me use this suppressor on some of my other guns like the Silent Professional from Battle Arms and the Elf Owl from JTAC Industries. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about this suppressor because when you hear it for the first time, it actually sounds like what you hear in movies. Uh, without getting into all the science behind it, I'll say this. The SOCOM 300 SPS uses a V-shaped baffle design that promotes extreme sound containment. Surefire has said that it's one of the quietest suppressors that they have ever made. Say what? So for those out there that are new to the suppressor world, I want to make sure that you understand the sound level on the SOCOM 300 SPS is much lower than what you would get from other suppressors on the market. Now I'm not saying that other suppressors can't achieve the same sound reduction. What I'm saying is that if you wonder why some suppressors are highly priced more than others, well this is why. It's like the old saying, you get what you pay for. Good point. For those who are going to ask about the adjustable gas blocks or adjustable bolt carry groups, um, I didn't go with either of those for this build. Um, everything you see here in regards to the bolt carry group, the charging handle, um, the barrel, gas block, and suppressor are all the winning combination to have this gun function so quietly and reliably. Nice. Um, I haven't had great experiences with adjustable gas blocks or adjustable bolt carry groups, um, so that's why I chose not to go that route for this build. Well guys, that is it for this show and tell session. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed a look at my first 300 blackout build. Big shout out to Geisley for sending us over the various parts for this build. We could not have done it without them. Also to Ventura Munitions for the awesome gray Cerakote and to Vortex for letting us try out the Razer HD Gen 2. I definitely want to pick one of those up. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up down below. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing as we post new videos every week. If you wanna support our content, please check out the Patreon link down below. Uh, members of our Patreon squad get first access to content, new gear, discounts, and giveaways. It's because of them that we can continue to create these videos for you all. Guys, thanks again for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. How do you like switching the gun up to a lefty? It feels great now. What don't you like? This.
<laughs> Get you a, a wrong-handed uh, upper receiver. Yeah, that would work. once. <laughs> How satisfying is that? Though? It was, but good guy. <laughs> yeah, way better. 